Hey guys, it's Alexa here and we have Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Ruby and I have been really good friends for a little while mm. actually. But feels like forever. But feels like forever. Mm-hmm. And we send each other voice messages a lot. So we thought let's make this official actual, podcast official yeah rather than just voice notes <laughs> that go on for 10 minutes each <laughs> literally <laughs> um so today we're going to be covering like just the journey about life and mm-hmm. raising children a little bit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and all the topics all the hard things all, all the, the challenges all the triumphs yeah let's get into it all right let's start mm-hmm. I think that was good. We anyway. don't know yet. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. Cool. All right. Hi. Hello. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to see nice you. Nice to hear always. you. <laughs> With our yeah. little things on. Yes. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah, this is cool. I'm this is cool. Excited to be doing this with you. Yeah, I'm just getting comfy because I just oh, no, I feel get like I'm sliding moment. around these chairs everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I just want to like put my legs up a bit. Yeah, that's like how I super. sit too. My legs yeah. crossed over. Yeah, I might go down. Yeah. And, <laughs> I might go down a little bit in the world. So we look like the a bit same. More grounded. Right now. There we go. Yeah, fabulous. And making sure. Okay, this so is nice. it is nice. Yeah. So something that I wanted to touch on. Okay. Um, I was thinking about before when we're having our conversation, I didn't want to get into it because I wanted to talk about it in the podcast. Mm-hmm. Saving it. Saving Save it your own the best. Mm. Yeah. Was, you know that I do bodybuilding mm-hmm. and you were talking about the space that you're in about healing and mm-hmm. sleeping in and all of that. And you said, well, what is the reason why you are pushing yourself? What is this discipline? And I thought about it this morning and – I feel like, and this is probably something that's conditioned and I don't know, but you hear from people like uh, Gary Vee or other successful entrepreneurs where they say, I don't want to go too much into the mindfulness or the meditation because I'll lose my drive. Mm -hmm. And I just found it very interesting because Mm -hmm. I thought about it and for so long I was a fighter, a boxing fighter. And as a fighter, you have to push so hard in that ring and outside of the ring. Like I'm up you know, 5 a.m. every morning, 5, 6 a.m. doing runs, sprints, um, and then training and then more training, weights and then boxing and then sparring every day. Mm. So it's like crazy. It's crazy push. And it's like I got used to that, that intensity. And I love that I bring that into my business and into my work because it makes me disciplined in business and a really great work ethic and I push really hard. But then, yes, it does kind of go against a little bit of that peace and listening to the body and calmness. Mm. And I wanted to hear your take on that and, like, with where you're at. Mm, 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 And mm. because I know before you were saying uh, if I didn't go outside or if I didn't run, I'd feel really bad and, you know, I'd beat myself up over it. Yeah. And those are really, you know, they're really useful it's a useful way of being with when it comes to work and career and getting things done and mm. doing and, mm. you know, being driven and all those things. But I feel like our society has been, the way we're brought up is so much about that that I feel like we've also lost the balance and I think there's no right or, way, right or wrong way of doing things but mm. I feel like it's a little, it's been too much the way of push, push, push and then we disregard actually what it is we need which is what where I'm at now it's Mm -hmm. funny that you mentioned about um if you stop doing that you'll lose some of your um like you won't be as maybe ambitious I can't remember exactly what you said but Ray's had the same conversation with me he said you know over these years you've been doing much less oh what was he what did he say like if I start doing meditation and going into that, then I'm not going to be as driven. And then if we're both not doing anything, then what's going to (laughs) happen? Like he was just saying like the change in pace, from his perspective, I'm so much more not driven. But for me, I'm finding inner peace and so much more um, joy and Mm. just it's filling my cup up so much more being able to slow down and being in that space of stillness much more rather than the push. Cause yeah, I was definitely in that same, that same way of being throughout my whole life. Like I worked so hard when I was young, when I first got out of school, when I was 16, I worked three jobs. I was like hard hitting the gym, doing all that hit, like doing body attack and then doing weights and doing so much stuff, pushing myself. 
and you just fall in like fall into a, a rhythm of this is just what I do every day. And for me, it wasn't healthy for me personally. And we all have different energies and different ways of doing things, of course. But I just I've come to a stage after now all these years and going on my own personal journey, realizing that I I've pushed so far away from myself mm. in doing that. So yeah, for me now I'm in the opposite and it feels for it's I've rejected it for so long, but mm. I've been told by myself enough's enough. Like it's time to really just stop resisting, surrender into the rest mm. and give yourself the repair that you need for your body, for your soul, for the relationship with yourself. Mm. Um, so yeah, I've this has been a long time coming and it feels sometimes really uncomfortable being like, oh, you know what, today I'm just actually not even going to go for a walk and that's sometimes difficult. Or other times like yesterday, like I went to be like, oh, I'm going to do some yoga outside, I'm going to go for a walk after that and do this. Mm. I lied down and just meditated for like an hour and a half and I felt so much better just doing that. So nice. So yeah, that's just where mm. I'm at personally. It's a very different space to your where you are at. Mm. It, like it's a totally different way of doing things. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, it's, it sounds nice though. It sounds yeah. very nice. Yeah. So what do you find the challenges are with being in this rest state? Going against your usual behaviour patterns mm. of and the guilt of not doing, like, oh, I should be doing this or like, oh, I'm not getting enough done mm. and like I'm just I'm sick of having to think about that way of being every day and being governed by that with time and feeling like I have to do stuff <laughs> yeah definitely yeah definitely yeah but then as well what do you find like do you find that being in this state is is a forever thing or it's just a temporary thing or you may transition yeah that's a really great question I feel like it's just a, I think it's a certain phase hmm. that is just kind of really required because it's been a such a build-up for so long mm. to get to this point of feeling such burnout and such I'm not in alignment with how I know I need to be as my own entity. Mm. And so doing this now, just I'm, I've never, as as much as it feels slightly uncomfortable, I've never felt so good as well. Like I'm sleeping 12 hours a night and crazy. I'm like, and that's it's okay. So nice. Yeah. <laughs> how many hours do you usually get? Oh, no, I, I, I usually get a good eight, but it's split in between. Broken like, up a little bit. Of so eight. much. Mm -hmm. I mean. One to two hours, two to three. Mm. Yeah, but um, I will always push. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you adapt, you know, like anything in life. Yeah, I think. yeah, exactly. You adopt. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe that's just what it'll be. But maybe your body works with that. Okay, you know, maybe that is enough for you. So before I had kids, I really valued sleep and that was my number one thing mm. that I knew I didn't want. Like I, I knew that I would struggle with the whole sleep thing because I am a sleeper. Mm. Like I love my sleep. I love the solid state eight hours. Um, and I can't believe I've adapted because I haven't had a solid eight hours for mm. like four years mm. almost, which is wild for me. Like but, I'm not that person. <laughs> yeah. But being a mother as yeah. well, I think there's so much – more instinctual behaviors mm. that come with that naturally. Oh, it's too, so, there's right? so many beautiful things. Yeah, there's so many beautiful things. And yeah. you, like like I say, you actually do. You really do adapt. Like you really do. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No better way to explain it than adapt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The chemicals come. It tells it. You know, you're instinctually yes. driven. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And 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 you do still feel energetic. Like you don't. Like I often, there's another thing as well with energy. What, where do you sit with energy? Like where do you find your energy? Where do you get that source? Mm. Is it from food? Is it from something else, mm. substance? Mm. Me? I get it from being in my own space mm. big time. And What does that mean? Being in, being just with me for a period of time and that could be just a day but it's really allowing me to, whether it's just explore my own mind, whether it's just journaling, whether it's just lying out in the sun, whether it's just being with me, whether I'm cooking or whatever it is, mm. that's what that's what energizes me. It's like refilling my battery. Mm. Specifically as well, sitting on the grass outside, I yeah. feel like 
I literally feel like I'm an iPhone being plugged in. Yeah. To my my source. I feel you. Yeah. I love. That's what does it for me. I love, love, love sitting in the grass under the sun. Yeah, right. It's like my favorite <laughs> thing to do. It's what we're made to do so as, nice. as creatures here is to connect back with the earth. Even though yeah. like, even with, I watched this really interesting documentary called Earthing. Mm. And I went and bought an Earthing mat and all these things. I don't know about the mat thing. <laughs> <laughs> I always get pulled into buying any of those things. I'm That's like, so oh, okay. Funny. Um, <laughs> the frequency. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, our feet are there to connect with earth. Like, and the fact that we're wearing rubber soles, yeah. we're completely disconnected. It's it's there to, like, clean our immune system. It's there to keep us connected in so many ways. Mm. But we don't get that because of wearing shoes now. Mm. So mm. if we can even just earth Ten minutes a day, just put the feet in the dirt on the grass or something. Mm. It does so much for us in ways we don't realize. We need to be teaching kids this because yeah. there, yeah. I mean, there's so much around this whole society mm-hmm. about fear mm-hmm. and stalling into the children. Like mm-hmm. you have to wear shoes to be outside. Like I'm so about don't wear shoes. Get your feet adapted to the ground. Yeah, like, used to it. You yeah, know. Um, and roll in the dirt. Like. You know, yeah, get, you need to, yeah, get amongst life. Get, uh, yeah, get dirty. it does. When I do watch sometimes so much um, wrapping in cotton wool and like not wanting your child to explore, like you know, it needs to make mistakes. It needs to, it. yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. That little chicken, that yeah. little it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's so. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole thing. Yes. It's a whole thing yes. because you need to you need as as adults we need to make mistakes. Like I I really see children as mini adults and they oh, are for sure, they yeah. are. Yeah. But a lot of people see children as kids and adults as adults, mm-hmm. but really children are they're their own being. They they understand so much more than we give them credit for. Mm, they're yeah. unlinear. They really are. Yeah. They're, they're, they're very intuitive. Yeah. They're smart, they're emotionally in touch with themselves like and I, what I see a lot of when it comes to parenting is uh, trying to stop the children from crying. I see that a lot. Like, stop crying, stop crying, mm. don't cry. And it's like you're just making them feel like it's not safe to feel that emotion and, and not even try to understand that emotion first. Mm. It's so important because, you know, you see, I always think of it, come back to the adult, look at the adult. Like what does the adult need? If the adult is crying and, you know, you don't – you. Yes, you could probably be like, here's a credit card and go shopping Which, and that's going to make yeah. you, you know, temporarily happy. Yes, you could do that. But what's better, I think, for the adult is making them feel like it's okay to cry. Yes. Making them feel like you're you're here, you're listening to them, you you love them, you respect them, you're, you're, just, you're just here, you're just here mm. with them in their Having energy. their experience of yeah. whatever that emotion is. And yeah. so when you think of, okay, let's, let's bring that back to the kid and do the same thing. Mm. Yeah. And they're sure. just trying to sort out, they're just trying to figure out what that emotion is. Sometimes they don't yeah, know. So sometimes they, need, they don't know. They don't even know, right? They don't even really know how to put words to things either. Yeah. Like yeah. This. yeah. I had a funny, um, I had a funny like realization the other day about from young, from a very young child, how you're conditioned around emotions and pleasure and pain. And just mm-hmm. thinking about when I used to get like injections as a kid, my parents would then buy me a toy. To like, yeah, you know, or reward. like give me a, an ice yeah. cream. And I think, oh, wow, it's put into us so young to try and avoid that emotion and to to give you some sort of stimulation. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and, and they're doing, not, that's, that's yeah. a nice thing. Like, yeah, they, exactly. you don't want me it's to like feel they don't that bad want thing. To. Yeah, it's, it's it's common. I mean, it's it's literally there's lollipops at the hair salon at the doctors for a reason yeah. to give it to the yeah. child for getting an injection. Yeah, like, it's a normal. Well, it's not normal, but it's just something that it's just funny. It's an interesting. It's, yeah, it's just interesting yeah. to notice. But it's it's so it's so vital because then we have to do all this unlearning as an adult. You know, so much unlearning. <laughs> that's the hard bit. <laughs> it's really I feel hard. like that's the journey of life is <laughs> to some, unlearn everything. Yes. Right. Yeah, to find out like you know what you've always fucking knew. Mm-hmm known i mean mm-hmm. since you were a child since you were a little it's, it's taking off all the layers and all the things yeah. that you've had to take on and and become and be mm. programmed into it's like yeah it's all that unprogramming and it's so interesting i was having this thought yesterday um actually something that you mm. said and then i made a video on on my story about it mm. not sure if you if you saw that no one. i haven't been on sure. um but oh wait hang on we'll be touching on the Oh yeah. So when we were ki- when when I was a kid, I didn't have much discipline um, mm. growing up. Like we, my my mum, 
I was mainly living with my mother at the time and she, like we were pretty much allowed to do whatever we wanted. Like we made our own decisions. Sounds fun. Yeah, it, it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. But I despised her a lot when I was in my teens and getting older and learning mm. to understand I was different to everyone else. But what's interesting, and I thought about this today, I have so much discipline today to like if I want something, I'm going to go get it. Mm -hmm. But interesting that I didn't have it when I was a kid. I wasn't forced into it, but how do I have so much discipline now. today? I just, I find that interesting. That's it might something. just be a part of your dynamic. You as yeah. an entity have yeah. that as a, as a trait, exactly. as that's something to I, fulfill you. I think that, and that's why I think we have all these incredible qualities, like mm. separately, we have, mm. we have these unique qualities. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're a child and you get pushed into doing, mm -hmm. into a square and into doing certain things a certain way, it's like you lose that that special uniqueness about yourself yeah your full expression like you so, it then becomes who am i yeah 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 right yeah it's the journey of relearning who you are <laughs> but um i was gonna say when you mentioned about your mum, mm. if you've grown up in such a free environment to do whatever you want you know because mine was quite the opposite and i feel mm. like that's what made me rebel a lot mm. was being told how to do things well, or having it common. done for me yeah which makes sense mm. um but in the opposite way for you, you didn't have that. So what was that like in that relationship then becoming a teenager and how did that affect you? Yeah. So um, so it's difficult when you're young. There's a, a couple of reasons why. First is I fell into like drugs and, mm. and alcohol and hanging out with the really old, like older guys and I did some fucking shitty, <laughs> silly shit. <laughs> really bad. Maybe that's why we get along. Yeah. <laughs> Silly, silly stuff. Crazy little learning young. Learning yeah, young. like, and I would sometimes be away from home for weeks mm. and <laughs> just party. Mm. Um, so I, I don't think that was particularly the greatest um, because I would die if my child does that. Oh, but look at where you but are where now. I am now. It's good, person, right? Yes, I'm so mm. grateful for the person I am. But because um in my teens when I, or or later teens when I started to figure out life a little bit more I did despise my mum because I was like oh like mm. how could you just let me do whatever how could you do how could you rah, rah, rah. um but yes. now yeah I'm so grateful for it because I made my own decisions and I went through that young but then again people go through that young are still in that stage mm. there are people who are still taking drugs mm. like I stopped mm. all that mm. there are people who are still in that party zone, in that addiction, you know, like they're, mm, you know, mm -hmm, so people haven't mm -hmm. gotten themselves out. I'm lucky that I got myself out. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's, it's hard as well to say because my way of um, being parented might not work for someone else. Of course. You know, because we're all different. Like my sister took it on a lot differently to what, to what I did. Every child is so um, different. It's so different. Yeah. yeah. And it was the same parenting. Yeah. So yeah. Um, for me, it worked perfectly for me. I'm so grateful um, because being so independent, I was able to find out, you know, a lot of, of about trauma and I, because I had experienced trauma when I was young. Mm. So I learned a lot about that and how to heal myself, not completely, but start that healing. We can never journey. be fully yeah. healed. It's just Can't a continuous be, but, you know, <laughs> I, I yeah. explored, you know, started mm. to explore this young and I'm so grateful mm. for that. And then I, you know, read read books and searched things up and really just try to educate myself. Growth, growth, mm, you know, mm, I really mm. had this, mm. this inner desire to grow and to be better and to be this person, to be on this healing mm. journey. So I'm for that, because of this, I'm so grateful for my upbringing. And it's, I, I'm trying to now with my own kids not do the exact same thing because there are things that I mm. would change slightly. Of course, everyone, anyone would. Um, but I think what's really important is making sure that they're confident in themselves, like they yeah. trust themselves. Yeah. They trust their own innate ability to think and to be intuitive and they have this knowing that everybody has this knowing and I really mm -hmm. want to make sure that they trust that. Mm. Because the disconnect like from the knowing is yeah. where you get so lost. Yeah, you know, and it's it, you start to rely on other people, especially or logic, as a thinking of the head logic. all the time, yes, rather yeah. than your innate yeah, intuition. Yeah, school and teachers and stuff, which is mm. great. It's mm. great to listen to other people, but at the end of the day, you are the person who knows best, mm. always mm. for yourself. Mm. Like it's just this knowing. What a beautiful, what a beautiful teachings that you can, Hopefully. you know, try and guide your children mm. into being, and just self love 
like really loving self. I remember watching this little um, Instagram where it was like a, a little girl talking about how much she loves herself and she was giving herself a hug. And this man was doing an interview t- with her and just they were just chatting. And it was just so beautiful to see. It's like I wish that we continued that as we grew into older children and teenagers. Yes. That would be a great thing to teach at school, just self-love, yeah, just, yeah, self-acceptance. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, right? Like if – if you don't love yourself, you're going to try and find it in other places. Yeah, or self-worth, just knowing that you're born and worthy, that born well. enough. Yeah, we are. We, honestly, we are all born. I always think of that. I try and think of that as much as possible. It's like just being born, you're born enough. What changes in the meantime? Yeah. You know? It's true. Nothing changes. Your it's presence. just our, our conditioning or yeah. thinking we need to be better or different or something else. Yeah. So, yeah. How are you with that journey at the moment? Like, how do oh, you, like, where are you at with that? Going pretty well. <laughs> Been working on it for a pretty long time. Yeah. No, I'm at, it's actually feeling like I have made some big steps forward in that path um, mm. by finally listening to me. Yeah. And listening to giving myself what I know I need. And mm. yeah, just it is it is a practice. It's a continuous practice to recondition and change your brain's pathways of how it thinks and automatic yeah, just automatic views and ideologies on how you look at yourself and life. Mm. It's it's just reshaping things and it's Yeah. Where yeah. are you at now? Like what's your what's your current like self challenges that you work? My on? big thing right now is trust. Trust in yourself. Trust in myself, but it's not just trust in myself because mm. it's indirectly or directly trust in something so much greater than me because mm. it's just that cycle back around. So mm. it's really quite, you know, if I was going to go into the spiritual aspect of this, it's really deep of trusting God again, mm. trusting source or whatever you want to call it, trusting yes. that that yeah. that universal, mm. that universe that is guiding. And how are you doing that every day? I well, I've been on my. I've been doing Reiki and energy energy healing and a lot of that for the last few years, um, and it's shown me a lot. It's really just deepened my whole outlook on the magic of the cosmos and what we are in this, you know, yeah, this web of energy. And so, you know, doing my own self healing, doing healings with others, doing meditations, doing breath works, mm. doing journaling, doing all these things, and just my biggest thing is just having quietness to contemplate. I can't think of anything more enjoyable for me is just that moment where my, my mind can mm. kind of just explore the different ideas and outlooks and pasts and all of that. So, you know, having that space, like I was saying before, is my most nourishing thing for me. And realizing how much of that I actually need is way more than perhaps what is um, what maybe people are used to in their regular life. But I've realized that's just that's what I need to fill my cup. Yeah. Um, I love that. Yeah. We'll be back mm. in just a second, mm-hmm. my little chick. Okay, so if, go into anything in particular. Yeah, if this this is I think this would be nice. If you if I was your let's say 17, 18 year old mm. self mm-hmm. sitting in front of you Ooh. and you just had like a quick moment to say something to them, say something to her, what would it be? Oh wow. Oh, that's a big one. It's a quick moment, so you gotta I'm I'm your L- Listen to self. your heart. You know the truth. Mm. You know. You've always known. Just stop doubting yourself and stop just listen to you. Well, it makes me emotional, yeah. It makes me emotional. Yeah. <laughs> Thought you really talking the to knowing is, <laughs> the knowing's there. The, the knowing is there, and it's always been there. But you just have so little <sighs> confidence in that, and in, in your worth, and in all these things. But the wisdom—you're born with wisdom. You yes, are. You are born innately with wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdomic. <laughs> Wisdomic. Wisdomily. <Yes. laughs> wisdom. <laughs> wisdom. <laughs> yeah. So I think I think that's what I'd probably if I had like one, you know. 10 seconds of boom. Yeah. That's what I'd say. <laughs> Just a little split. Hello. Yeah. I always, yeah. What about you? Okay, let me just think about my 17 mm, year old self. Mm. Oh, what does she look like? Oh, she's, she's cute. <laughs> cute now, cute always. <laughs> Sexy girl. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I would say, oh, <laughs> leave him. <laughs> <laughs> 
can't shit. Listen nothing. to your truth. <laughs> Listen to your heart, girl. You already know. <laughs> you already know. You always know. <laughs> shit. No, I would say, um, I would say, oh, it makes me emotional just mm. seeing her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? That's the inner, the inner um, child work. Oh, it, yeah, there it, it is. you. <laughs> Straight away. <laughs> Uh, I would say, um, yeah, just uh, what, I, what I would always say would be, um, <laughs> mm-hmm. like, you, hmm, one moment. Take your time. You got this one chance, one, one, <laughs> what's that Eminem what? song? One chance, one shot, <laughs> one opportunity. <laughs> it's all you ever wanted. Spaghetti, what was that? Uh, <laughs> His neat arms are heavy. <laughs> Mom and on his bed already. Mom's spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> don't get me going. <laughs> um, yeah. Would it be easier to speak to your even younger child, like your younger self? Yeah, maybe. Maybe in like your 10 year old. Oh, you know what? Any, I don't know why I feel stuck on this. Mm. It's just, it, it's, I, I, I do a lot of inner child meditation, mm, mm, but mm. when I revisit mm. them, it's like, it's a whole. <laughs> we're feeling pressured with time. One minute. No. Yeah, no, I, I hate to, I hate any type of pressure. I know, just, I'm like, it's not my thing. You know, some people are good are under you pressure. You did so well under pressure. <laughs> no, usually I'm terrible under pressure. You terrible. Did really well. Okay, let me think. Take your time. Take your time. Don't pressure. <laughs> <laughs> That's only a minute, but it's okay. <laughs> I'll meditate for 10 seconds. So you're standing in front of you. Yeah, that's what I'm... I would say that everything is going to be okay. Mm. (laughs) It's going to make me cry. Mm. (laughs) Everything. You have no idea what's coming for you. Yeah, you know, it's like fuck, you get everything. Ready. Yeah, get ready, girl. <laughs> get ready, but it will be okay. Damn, <laughs> uh, and everything, and and you're gonna go through some really tough times, some really like hard times mm. where it's gonna really que- you're gonna question a lot, mm. but at the end, you're gonna mm. be <laughs> you're gonna be so f- amazing, and you're gonna be so incredible, and you're just gonna keep on working hard. You're gonna keep on that journey. Mm. Just keep on trusting yourself. Mm. 